What do people even do on Wall Street? So evidently I'm not your average finance bro, but this past fall I had the opportunity to go to the McGill Women in Finance Convention run by the lovely McGill Investment Club. And I thought that I would take you along and share some of what I learned along the way. The convention initially started last year the idea was thought up by Quinn Hoon, who was the McGill Investment Club president from 2022 to 2023. Um, and the whole idea was that she was looking back on herself in first year and about how much she missed out on having a community of other women who could support her on her journey in terms of recruiting for finance. The first workshop we had was about mindset and confidence. Fixed amount of effort, smarter. It's also how it works most. And Professor Kondo talked about everything from dealing with failure to reflecting on who you are as a person in your career. And what really stood out to me was this idea of the ideal founder. He said that the best ideas come at the intersection of being economically important, interesting to you, well-timed, and uniquely valuable or contrarian. Our next session was with Scotiabank. Three types of clients, so corporate, commercial, and institutional clients. So they are more so on the sell side of the finance industry. So this means that they sell things like stocks or bonds and things like that. And they also sell their research and their advice to other companies. So say you were a company trying to buy another company, you would ask a banker on the sell side about advice on how to do that. This is in contrast to the buy side, which includes things like insurance companies and pension funds. So they basically buy things in the hopes that those things will increase in value and make them money. So say you invest into a pension fund, that fund will then spend your money to buy things that increase in value. So then in 40 years, hopefully you have enough money for a tropical retirement. I'll talk a little bit more about what types of things these investors buy in a bit. We were given this infographic before the convention and it explains the different parts of the finance industry. I'm gonna cover most of them in this video, but if you wanna go ahead and read it, you can do that. Everything I say is going to be incredibly simplified, so I apologize if I miss anything or if I get anything wrong. Are you excited for the food? Yeah, it looks so good. What's your favorite part of the convention, either this year or last year? I honestly think seeing all of your reactions to attending, like it's so cute when you guys go in and then there's a presentation and you come out and you seem, you seem energized and enthusiastic. And that's for me when I see, okay, all of the work that we've been doing behind the scenes for months, it's worth it. My favorite part I would say is definitely learning about things that I kind of had thought were one thing and then completely like were a completely different thing because I know that I assume certain things about jobs and investment banking and private equity and I assume that I wouldn't necessarily like gravitate towards either of those but then I ended up actually really liking private equity when I learned a little bit about it. For me I think it's just like looking around the room and just seeing all of these women who are just interested and curious and so supportive of each other as well. I think it's so cool and I still can't get over the fact that like I look around and, and there's so many people here. It is so nice to see so many faces in this room. We had sessions with CDPQ and CPP Investments, which are both on the buy side of things. So they invest in things like public equity, private equity, real assets, and credit or fixed income. Public equity or stocks are when you buy a part of a company and then depending on how that company performs, your the value of your investment goes up or down. Private equity is like public equity, but not everybody can invest in it. It's usually institutions that invest and they usually have more influence over what a company does. Real assets are physical things that you can invest in. So instead of buying a part of a company, you can buy real estate or infrastructure. The last category is credit or fixed income. So this involves lending money with the promise that it will be paid back later with an extra percentage of interest. And this interest is what makes the firm money. We got to network with representatives from each firm after the sessions, and it was super cool to learn about what their favorite parts of their jobs were, what their day to days looked like, and so much more. Near the end of the day, there was a senior women leaders panel, and they had so many great insights. And 
what really stood out to me was their discussion about work-life balance, especially with motherhood. And I think because I'm so young, I don't think about it as much. So it was really inspiring to hear their stories and how they navigated all of it. We had a junior women fireside chat the next morning where we got to ask questions to women earlier on in their careers. So I decided to become a court because I just think that the Women in Finance Convention is just such a great event to really bring um, women together and it, it really provided me last year with such a great platform to sort of jump off from. I knew nothing about finance and it all just seemed very overwhelming as a whole so I think it's just um, it's just such a, a great concept and I really wanted to be able to be a part of that and give back uh, to the McGill community in some way. And then BMO brought half their firm down for their session. BMO is another bank on the sell side of the finance industry. So the sell side is kind of split up into three different areas. You have corporate banking, investment banking, and sales and trading. So corporate banking deals with lending money to corporations. Investment banking deals with giving advice to companies. And maybe another way to kind of take away an illusion is investment banking. You're not investing anything. And the name is wildly misleading and maybe why there's so much people who don't quite understand. And it's not their fault because why is it called investment banking when you're simply actually not investing anything? But a lot of the time, and this is what investment bankers do, is they're selling their services of advisory. Essentially, an investment bank has two main functions. That is going to be advising companies in terms of acquisition strategies or essentially selling themselves. And the second prong of that is raising debt. And so when you hear like debt capital markets, equity capital markets, like companies need to raise funds in order to fund their operations. And that is something that investment banks will advise on, where companies either want to sell themselves to another company or they want to acquire different companies and investment bankers will advise on those transactions. The key word you hear a lot in investment banking is advise. These are experienced professionals who know how to run financial models to predict outcomes in terms of like finance impacts, synergies between companies, etc. And they will put together presentations to advise their clients and help fulfill their needs. And that's another really key aspect to um, highlight about investment banking is that it's a client focused business. A pitch you're working on, a deal you work on, there's always a client at the other end. And that's what contributes to sometimes these crazy hours to hear these bankers working. Because sometimes when they're working early into the morning, it's not because they've been, you know, grinding all since 9 a.m. and there's just so much work. It's more so about like unpredictability of the hours because all you're doing is about fulfilling every single need and limb and whim of your client. And then lastly, we have sales and trading. It's split up into so many different subcategories. So to give a really high level overview here, first of all, you have researchers and quantitative teams. They're the ones actually looking through reports and coming up with, you know, what should we actually invest in or what, what strategy should we use based on lots of data. Then they have to communicate that to a separate sales team. And what the sales team does is it basically acts as a massive intermediary. They're hearing the research from the research team, then communicating it to the client, being like, okay, do you want to buy this, sell this? Here's what the research we have to like justify that choice. And then if the decision comes through and the client says, yeah, that sounds great, then the sales team then has to tell the traders. So the traders are the ones who actually execute. They're the ones who actually like go click buy or click sell, right? And make the deal happen. We ended the day with a resume workshop. We totally thought this was gonna be a slideshow, but the MIC execs pulled up with red pens, copies of our resumes, and pulled us off to the side to give us feedback. It was incredibly helpful, but also very intimidating. The next morning, we had one more session online with our last firm, and then a panel from the sponsors of the convention. <laughs> we ended the convention by getting scarves and enjoying coffee and bagels with the other delegates. My favorite part was meeting all these amazing women and explore the different opportunities that there are in the finance world. I would have to second that, just like seeing this incredible like <laughs> world of finance and women that I didn't really think about before. That's also amazing because now in that long list of possible opportunities, you got to cross something off to know that I had like played any sort of role with exposing someone to a potential career that they would find fulfilling and like lead them to like a life of happiness like that sounds kind of cliche to say 
but no one had any part in like having like creating that expression on their faces was just that was more than enough and like my philosophy to all of this is like if even one person is able to use this experience to like improve their life in any way it's it was all worth it i honestly wish i could have packed more into this video I learned so much and I got to meet so many incredible women, whether that be the firm reps or my peers or the organizers. And I got to hear about their stories and their insights and it was really empowering. And I think that's really what I'll take away from the convention. So on that cheesy note, I will see you next time. Bye.